Welcome back to our channel, Pirates and Parrots. Pirate and Parrot stories of picture books, chapter books, and our own adventures on land and sea. Today we'll be reading the chapter book, Magic Treehouse series, Pirates Past Noon. Pirates and Parrots, chapter book, story time. Part one, Magic Treehouse, Pirates Past Noon. Now, if you're not familiar with the Magic Treehouse series, it's a wonderful series of books about two children, brother and sister, and the Magic Treehouse that they've discovered. This is the fourth in the series, and this is the one where they meet the pirates. Pirates Past Noon by Mary Pope Osborne, illustrated by Sal Murdaka. Chapter One. Picture. Too Late. Jack stared out his bedroom window. The rain kept falling and falling. The TV said it would stop by noon, said Annie, his seven-year-old sister. It's already past noon, said Jack. But we have to go to the treehouse, said Annie. I have a feeling the M person will be there today. In the previous stories, we hear about this mysterious M person. Jack pushed his glasses into place and took a deep breath. He wasn't sure he was ready to meet the M person yet. The mysterious person who had put all the books in the magic treehouse? Come on, said Annie. Jack sighed. Okay, he said. You get our raincoats and boots. I'll get the medallion and bookmark. There's much to do about a bookmark. This be my bookmark. I got this at the Museum of the Ships of Norway. I'll get the medallion and the bookmark. Annie ran to get the rain gear. Jack reached into his drawer. He took out the medallion. It was gold. The letter M was engraved on it. Where are you going at, Bunny? Closer look. Then he took out the bookmark. It was made of blue leather. It had the same M on it. Both M's matched the M that was on the floor of the treehouse. He put the medallion and bookmark into his backpack. Then he threw in his notebook and pencil. Jack liked to take notes about important things. That's always a good idea. I take lots of notes. Do you take notes? Uh, you don't take too many notes. I got our rain stuff, called Annie. Jack picked up his pack and went downstairs. Annie was waiting by the back door. She was putting on her boots. Meet you outside, she said. Jack pulled on his raincoat and boots. Then he put on his backpack and joined her. The wind was blowing hard. Ready, set, go, shouted Annie. They kept their heads down and charged into the rainy wind. Soon they were at Fog Creek Woods. Their branches swayed, flinging rainwater everywhere. Yuck, said Annie. They splashed through the puddles until they came to the tallest oak tree in the woods. They looked up. Tucked between two branches was the treehouse. It looked dark and lonely against the stormy sky. Hanging from the treehouse was a rope ladder. It was blowing in the wind. I, I don't have a rope ladder, but I have a ship's ladder there, used for a shelf. It had my ladder. Made that for shelves when I were about 12, 13 years old. Jack thought of all the books up there. He hoped they weren't getting wet. The M person's been there, said Annie. Jack caught his breath. How can you tell, he said. I can feel it, she whispered. She grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Jack followed. Inside the treehouse, it was chilly and damp. But the books were dry. They were all neatly stacked along the wall, just the way they had been the day before. Annie picked up a castle book on top of one stack. It had taken them to the time of castles. Remember the night, she said. Jack nodded. He would never forget the night who had helped him. Annie put down the castle book. She picked up the next book in the stack. It was the dinosaur book that had taken them to the time of dinosaurs. Remember, she said. Jack nodded. He'd never forget the petrodon who had saved them from the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Then Annie held up a book about ancient Egypt. Meow, she said. Jack smiled. The Egypt book had taken them to the time of the pyramids. A black cat had come to the rescue there. 
I like cats, but you guys are not so big on cats, are you? Especially you. And here's the book about home, Annie said. She held up the book with a picture of their hometown in it. Fog Creek, Pennsylvania. Jack smiled again. The Pennsylvania book had brought them back home at the end of each of their adventures. Jack sighed. Okay, he still had two main questions. Who was the M person who'd put all the books there? And did the knight and Petrodon and the cat all know the M person? Good questions. Finally, Jack reached into his backpack. He took out the gold medallion and the leather bookmark. He placed them on the floor, right over the spot where the M glowed faintly in the wood. Mm. The rain blew into the treehouse. Brr, said Annie. It's not very cozy today. Jack agreed with her. It was too wet and cold. Look, Annie, pointed to the open book lying in the corner. I don't remember a book being open. Me neither, said Jack. Anne picked up the book. She stared at the picture on the page. Wow, this place looks great, she showed the picture to Jack. He saw a sunny beach, a big green parrot sitting in a palm tree, and a ship sailing on a blue sea. Another gust of rainy wind blew into the treehouse. Annie pointed to the picture. I wish we were there instead of here, she said. All right, we got another picture here, another illustration. See the M on the floor? And, Annie, and Annie's holding the picture book with a parrot in it. And there's the other books of the adventures they've had previous. Yeah, I said Jack, but where is there? Too late, came a squawk. Jack and Anne turned quickly. Sitting on a branch outside the window ledge of the treehouse was a green parrot, exactly like the parrot in the picture. Oh, no, you're not a green parrot. You're not a green parrot, so you weren't there. Too late, the parrot squawked again. A talking parrot, said Annie. Is your name Polly? Can I call you Polly? Suddenly the wind started to whistle. Oh no, now we're in big trouble, said Jack. The wind blew harder. The leaves shook. The tree house started to spin faster and faster. Jack squeezed his eyes shut. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Jack opened his eyes. Too late, squawked Polly. Chapter Two. The Bright Blue Sea. Jack felt hot sunlight streaming into the treehouse. He smelled salt water. He heard the sound of waves. He and Anne looked out the window. The treehouse was in a palm tree. Beyond was a bright blue sea. A tall sailing ship was on the horizon. It was just like the pictures in the book. Too late, squawked Polly. Look, said Annie. Polly was flying in circles above the treehouse. Then she swooped down to the ocean. Come on, let's follow her. Let's go in the water, said Annie. She took off her raincoat and dropped it on the floor. Wait, we have to study the book first, said Jack. He started to reach for the book, but Annie grabbed it. You can read it on the beach, she said. Without even looking at the cover, she shoved the book into Jack's backpack. He sighed. Actually, the water did look wonderful. It's always fun going to the beach, huh? Okay, Jack said. He took off his raincoat, too. Come on. Annie handed Jack his backpack, and they started down the ladder. Jack folded the raincoat and put it next to the stack of books. He put on his backpack and went down the ladder. Soon as Annie hit the sand, she ran toward the ocean. Jack watched her wade into the water. She was still wearing her rain boots. Your boots, Annie, called Jack. She shrugged. I'll dry out, she said. Jack took off his boots and socks. He put them beside his pack. Then he rolled up his jeans and ran across the hot sand into the waves. The water was warm and clear. Jack could see shells and tiny fishes. He shielded his eyes against the sun and peered out at the sea. The tall sailing ship seemed to be a bit closer. Where is Polly, said Annie. Jack glanced around. No sign of Polly. Not in the palm trees, not on the sunlit sand, not over the bright blue sea. 
got another picture here, another illustration. There's the ship, Jack looking out to it. <laughs> There's Annie in her rain boot still. When Jack looked out to sea again, the ship seemed even closer. Now Jack could see its flag. As he, as he stared at the ship's flag, a chill went through him. The flag was black with a skull and crossbones. Oh man, he breathed. He started out of the water. What's wrong, said Annie. She splashed after him. Jack ran to his backpack, and he followed. He grabbed the book from his backpack. He looked at the cover. For the first time, he and Annie read the title of the book. Yikes, said Annie. Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack read aloud. Here, watch out for them pirates. Chapter 3, Three Men in a Boat. We've come to the time of pirates, Jack said. Pirates, squeaked Annie. Like in Peter Pan? Jack flipped to the picture that showed the parrot, the sea, and the ship. He read the caption under the picture. Three hundred years ago, pirates raided Spanish treasure ships in the Caribbean Sea. He grabbed his notebook and pencil from his pack. He wrote, Pirates in the Caribbean. He turned to the next page. There was a picture of a pirate flag. He read, The skull and crossbones flag was called the Jolly Roger. Let's go, said Annie. Wait, said Jack, I want to make a drawing of the flag. He propped the pirate book in the sand. He started drawing the Jolly Roger flag. Don't copy the picture in the book, said Anne. Look at the real thing. But Jack just pushed his glasses into place and kept drawing. Jack, some pirates are getting into the rowboat, said Annie. Jack kept drawing. Jack, the boat's leaving the big ship, said Annie. What? Jack looked up. Look, Annie pointed. Jack looked. He saw the rowboat coming toward the shore. Run, said Annie. She started running toward the treehouse. Jack jumped up. His glasses fell off. Hurry, Annie called back to him. Jack went down on his knees. He felt for his glasses. Where were they? Jack saw something glinting in the sand. He reached for it. It was his glasses. He snatched them up. Then he threw his notebook and pencil into his pack. He put the pack on his back. He grabbed his boots and his socks and he took off running. Hurry, they're coming. And he was atop of the rope ladder. Jack looked back at the sea. The pirates were closer to the shore. Suddenly, Jack saw the pirate book. In all the confusion, he'd forgotten it. It was still propped in the sand. Oh man, I forgot the book, he said. He dropped his socks and boots below the treehouse. Come on, Jack, and he shouted. I'll be right back, Jack called. I've got to get the book. Jack, forget it. But Jack was already running toward the water. Jack grabbed the book. Come back, and he shouted. Jack shoved the book into his backpack. Suddenly, a giant wave carried the rowboat right onto the beach. Run, Jack, shouted Annie. Three big pirates splashed onto the sand. They had knives in their teeth. Uh, knives in their teeth, huh? Hey, hey, that's my knife. They had knives in their teeth. They had pistols in their... That, that's my knife. They had pistols in their belts. And they charged towards Jack. Run, Jack, run, cried Annie. I don't know about this holding a knife in my teeth. That doesn't work too well, does it? You got your own beak. You don't need a knife. That just doesn't work too well. I don't think. Okay. Chapter four. That's right. Yeah, that's what I think too. Chapter four. Vile booty. Jack started to run across the hot sand. He ran as fast as he could. Yeah, really fast. But the pirates ran faster. Before Jack knew it, the biggest pirate had grabbed him. Jack struggled, but the pirate had huge, strong arms. He held on to Jack and laughed a mean, ugly laugh. <laughs> he had a shaggy beard and a patch covered one eye. Have you ever seen a pirate with a patch? I never have, huh? 
Jack heard Annie yelling. He saw her coming down the rope ladder. Stay where you are, Jack shouted. But Annie kept coming. Leave him alone, you bully, she cried. The other two pirates laughed meanly. They were dirty and ragged. Annie charged up to the biggest pirate. Let him go, she said. He hit the pirate with her fist and kicked him. <laughs> Look at that. There's Annie kicking a pirate. <laughs> She's as brave as you are, Aunt Bonnie. But the pirate just growled. Then he grabbed her too, and with his giant hands, he held Jack and Annie as if they were two kittens. No one escapes Captain Bones, he roared. His breath was terrible. Let go, Annie shouted into his face. But Captain Bones just smiled. All his teeth were black. Ooh, that's pretty ugly. Annie fell silent. Captain Bones laughed loudly, then he turned to the other two. Find out what's in their house, you dogs, he said. Aye, aye, Captain, they answered, and they started up the ladder to the treehouse. What do you spy, Pinky? shouted Captain Bones. Books, Captain, Pinky shouted down. Ah, books, growled Captain Bones. He spit in the sand. In the sand? Maybe he's bad teeth, maybe he's chewing tobacco. Ugh. I want gold, you dogs. Dogs are nicer than you, said Annie. Shh, said Jack. What about you, Stinky? Captain Bones roared. Just books, Captain, shouted Stinky. Arr, arr, books, said Captain Bones. He spit on the sand again. My gosh, he does a lot of spitting, doesn't he? I hate books. Keep looking, dogs. Find me something good. Captain Bones grabbed Jackie's backpack. Were you getting scared there? Captain, Captain Bones grabbed Jack's backpack. What's in here, he said. Nothing. Jack quickly opened the pack. Just paper, a pencil, and a book. Another book, roared Captain Bones. That's vile booty. A gleeful shriek pierced the air. Captain Bones froze. What's that, he shouted. Look, Captain, look. Pinky leaned out of the treehouse window. He held the medallion. It glimmered in the sunlight. Oh, like glimmered like mine. Mine's a Mayan calendar. Yeah, I know you can't have it. Oh, brother, thought Jack. You know, I kind of like that. <laughs> Throw it down, cried Captain Bones. It's not yours, shouted Annie. Captain Bones dropped Jack and Annie. He caught the medallion as it fell. Gold, 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 he cried. Captain Bones threw back his head and laughed horribly. He grabbed two of his pistols. He shot them into the air. Pinky and Stinky howled like wolves. Chapter 5. The Kid's Treasure Jack and Annie watched in horror. The gold, greedy pirates seemed to have lost their minds. Jack nudged Annie. Together they started to pack slowly away from the pirates toward the treehouse. Halt! Captain Bones shouted. He aimed his pistol at them. Not another step, you landlubbers. Jack and Annie froze. Captain Bones grinned, his black tooth grin. Tell old Bones where the rest is. He growled, or prepare to meet thy doom. What? What rest, said Annie? The rest of the treasure, roared Captain Bones. I know it's on this island. I have a map. He reached into his belt pouch and pulled out a torn piece of paper. He waved it at Jack and Annie. Is that a treasure map, asked Jack? Aye, it's the map telling me about kids' treasure. Which kids' treasure? Not us kids, said Annie. We don't know anything about kids' treasure. Why don't you read the map, said Jack. You read it, Captain Bones shoved the map in Jack's face. Jack stared at the strange marks on the paper. What does that mean, asked Jack. What does what mean, asked Captain Bones. Those words, Jack pointed to the words at the bottom of the map. Well, it means, uh, Captain Bones' good eye squinted at the writing. He frowned, he coughed, he rubbed his nose. And... I leave him alone, Pinky growled at Jack. You know he can't read, said Stinky. Shut up, Captain Bones roared at his men. Jack and I can read, and he piped up. Shh, said Jack. 
Captain, make him read the map, said Stinky. Captain Bones gave Jack and Annie a dark look. Read it, he growled. Then will you let us go, said Jack. The pirate squinted with his good eye. Aye, lover, when the treasure's in me hands, I'll let you go. Okay, said Jack, I'll read it to you. He looked at the map. It says, the gold doth lie beneath the whale's eye. There's the map. <laughs> okay, said Jack, I'll read it to you. He looked at the map. It says, the gold doth lie beneath the whale's eye. Hey, Captain Bone scowled. What's that supposed to mean, lover? Jack shrugged. Hang it, take him back to the ship, shouted Captain Bones. They can rot there till they're ready to tell us how to find kid's treasure. Jack and Annie were tossed into the rowboat. Waves splashed the sides. The sky ahead was dark with thunderclouds. A strong wind had started to blow. Row, dogs, row, said Captain Bones. Pinky and Stinky began rowing toward the big ship. Look, Annie said to Jack. She pointed to the shore. Polly the parrot was flying over the sand. She wants to help us, whispered Annie. Polly started to fly out over the waves, but the winds were too strong. She turned around and flew back to the island. Chapter 6 The Whale's Eye we need a rowboat. I happen to have a rowboat. Zip up. So you're old. Start rowing. The rowboat tossed from side to side. The rowboat tossed from side to side. The waves were huge. Salty spray stung Jack's eyes. He felt seasick. Hold her steady, shouted Captain Bones. He pointed at the sea. Or will be meat for those evil brutes. Dark fins cut through the waters. Sharks, one zoomed right by the boat. Whoa, sharks. Jack could have reached out and touched it. He shuddered. Soon the rowboat pulled alongside the ship. Alongside the ship there. The air was filled with fiddle music and bagpipes playing. And Jack heard jeers, shouts, and ugly laughter. There's the picture here. Doesn't quite match the words though. That's a squeeze box there. Kind of like my squeeze box. Play that in a minute. And Jack heard jeers, shouts, and ugly laughter. Hoist him aboard, Captain Bone shouted to his men. Annie and Jack were hauled onto the deck. <laughs> there you go. The ship creaked and moaned. It rolled from side to side. Ropes flapped and snapped in the wild wind. Everywhere they looked, Jack and Annie saw pirates. Some were dancing. You were dancing a second ago. Some were dancing. Some were drinking. Many were fighting with swords or with their fists. So some are drinking, eh? Are you thirsty, Captain? You want some agua? Want some agua? Nothing like a good drink to quench the thirst. Good agua, huh? Lock him in my cabin, Captain Bones ordered. A couple of pirates grabbed Jack and Annie. They threw them in the ship's cabin and locked the door. The air inside the cabin was damp and sour smelling. A shaft of gray light came through a small round window. Oh man, said Jack, we've got to figure out how to get back to the island. So we can get into the treehouse and go home, said Annie. Right. Jack suddenly felt tired. How would he ever get out of this mess? We better examine the book, he said. He reached into his pack and pulled out the pirate book. 
You flip through the pages. What you doing there? You flip through the pages. You look for information to help them. Look, he said, I found a picture of pirates burying a treasure chest. This might help. Together they read the words under the picture. Captain Kidd was a famous pirate. It said that he buried a treasure chest in the, on a deserted island. The chest was filled with gold and jewels. Captain Kidd, said Jack. So that's the kid that Bones keeps talking about, said Annie. Right, said Jack. Annie looked out the round window. And Captain Kidd's treasure is buried somewhere on the island, she said. Jack took out his notebook. Jack took out his notebook and he wrote, Captain Kidd's treasure on island. Jack, Annie said, Shh, wait a minute, he said, I'm thinking. Guess what I see, said Annie. Oh, what, Jack asked. He looked back at the book. A whale. Neat, he said. Then he looked up. A whale. Did, did, did you say a whale? A whale. A huge whale as big as a football field. Jack jumped up and looked out the window with her. Where, Jack asked. All he could see was the island and stormy waves and shark fins. There, said Annie. Where, where? There, the island is shaped like a giant whale. Oh, man, whispered Jack. Now he could see it. See the whale's back, said Annie. Yep, the slope of the island looked like the back of a whale. See the spout, said Annie. Yep. The palm tree that held the tree house looked like the sprout of the whale. See his eye, said Annie. Yep, a big black rock looked like the eye of the whale. The gold doth lie beneath the whale's eye, whispered Jack. Wow, where have I seen an island that looks like a whale? Where have I seen one? Where might that be? Well, that brings us up to chapter seven. I think we better stop there. But before we go, how about a little squeeze box music ourselves here? This here's my squeeze box. You've been hearing the Ghost of Blackbeard try to play, but Ghost of Blackbeard don't play too well. So we've got the buttons on this side. We've got chords on this side. And I'll play you a little piece of the Ballad of Captain Flint. This is a song all about Captain and our first first mate, who is Mr. Gentry. teach you that song another time. It has words and lyrics and the whole story of Captain Flint and Mr. Gentry. Come back for the rest of Pirates Past Noon, the Magic Tree House by Mary Pope Osborne. Be time to ship off now.